seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. On October 4th, 1957, the Soviets launched the first artificial satellite Sputnik into orbit. For the scientific community, this was considered a great accomplishment and provided never before measured data about the upper atmosphere. Its iconic beeping radio transmission could be heard worldwide for weeks. However, the news in the United States within the context of the Cold War was met with alarm and shock. Fearing the Soviets had surpassed the U.S. in the technological sphere, and frustrated with the failure of Project Vanguard to accomplish what the USSR just had, a political movement began in the top tiers of U.S. government to fund a more organized and dedicated effort of research in flight and exploration of space. Not even a year after the success of Sputnik, President Eisenhower signed into law the National Aeronautics and Space Act on July 29, 1958 stating an act to provide research into the problems of flight within and outside the Earth's atmosphere and for other purposes. This act brought the existing National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, the Army Ballistic Missile Agency, the Naval Research Laboratory, and many Air Force-led research projects under one roof. The consolidation of efforts became NASA on October 1st, 1958, and with its founding, the space race was born. In NASA's infancy, it was dedicated to convincing the world that the United States was the most technologically advanced world superpower, along with trying to save face after the Soviet Union's early superiority in space. With Sputnik proving humanity's capabilities of putting earthly objects into orbit, the next logical step was sending humankind into the cosmos. The results for this were not promising at NASA. NASA began work with its first launch taking place just 10 days after its founding with the Pioneer 1. The mission, which was designed to put an unmanned probe into lunar orbit and collect data for future moon missions, ultimately failed due to a guidance system issue. Pioneer 2 and 3 failed at their stated lunar missions as well, which was not the best track record for the young organization. But Pioneer 4 would finally succeed in its mission on the 3rd of March, 1959, becoming the first US launch object to escape Earth's gravity and achieve lunar flyby. While well, it marked one of NASA's first big successes, the Soviets had achieved similar accomplishments in their space program two months prior. On April 12th, 1961, the Soviets would once again best the American space program when Yuri Gagarin became the first man in space and the first man to orbit Earth. During his flight, he would radio the famous words, the Earth is blue, how wonderful, it is amazing. While well, Yuri was hailed and paraded around the Soviet Union, the United States and NASA quickly prepared to match the feat. On May 5th of the same year, Project Mercury would succeed in sending Alan Shepard into suborbital space, although NASA could not match sending mankind into orbit until early 1962 with astronaut John Glenn. While Project Mercury seemed to always be just a step behind the USSR, overall it was hailed as a great success and stepping stone as NASA and the United States turned it to its attention to greater feats. On May 25, 1961, President Kennedy committed NASA to putting man on the moon before the decade seized. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The mid-1960s at NASA were defined from missions built on furthering capabilities in space exploration. Known as Project Gemini, NASA achieved many goals, including opening the Kennedy Space Center, the first American spacewalk, although the USSR once again topped NASA by about three months, sending multiple spacecrafts into rendezvous, which means close proximity flight in space, and achieving a somewhat close flyby of Mars. Ultimately, Project Gemini would land the Surveyor spacecraft on the surface of the moon in June 1966. Gemini would lead into NASA's most famous era with the Apollo program and the Saturn V rocket. The Saturn V's first voyage took place November 9, 1967, and despite being unmanned, it would establish itself as the vessel for future pursuits of putting astronauts on the moon. 
A little over a year later, the Saturn V would carry three men around the moon on the Apollo 8 mission. It is the first manned space flight to leave Earth's gravitational pull. A small victory for NASA in the space race, although greater things remained ahead. Subsequent Apollo missions would get closer and closer to putting astronauts on the moon, which would climax in possibly NASA's most famous mission, Apollo 11. Apollo 11 would launch from Cape Canaveral on July 16, 1969. The mission would culminate on July 21st as Neil Armstrong became the first man to walk on the lunar surface, shortly joined by Buzz Aldrin. Michael Collins also deserves a lot of credit for this mission as he was flying the command module in lunar orbit on the mission. This could be considered the ultimate victory in the space race as the USSR nor any other nation has ever matched the feat. I'm gonna step off the limb now. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The great accomplishments of Apollo 11, though, were not the conclusion of the Apollo program. Five following flights would put more men on the moon, concluding with Apollo 17 in 1972. Apollo 13 would also become infamous for its system failures days after launch although being able to return the entire crew to safety is an achievement in itself. Shortly following the Apollo era, NASA would also succeed in landing Viking 1 and 2 on Mars and launching the Voyager 1 and 2 probes to study the outer solar system and interstellar space. We will revisit those two later. Concepts for the space shuttle began as early as 1968, predating the initial moon landings. The initial goal of the space shuttle program was to create a reusable spacecraft that could support a conceptual space station. The project began to pick up steam in 1970 as NASA turned its attention to the post-Apollo era. The shuttle Enterprise began being tested in 1977 despite not being built with spaceflight capabilities. But the test flights of Enterprise would lead to the development of the, st of the space shuttle fleet, including Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavour. In 1981, Columbia carried two into orbit, beginning the space shuttle era at NASA. The space shuttle helped NASA achieve numerous accomplishments in the program's 30-year life. In 1983, on two different missions, Challenger flew the first American woman into space, Sally Ride, and the first black astronaut into space, Guy Bluford. Shuttles also assisted in three different interplanetary missions. It helped launch Magellan to explore Venus, Galileo to explore Jupiter, and Ulysses to study the sun during the 1989 and 1990 years. In 1990, the Discovery Space Shuttle assisted in launching the Hubble Space Telescope. Hubble is still operational today and has captured and collected many invaluable images of data of deep space. Its contributions include assisting in determining the age of the universe at 13.8 billion years, discovering the moons of Pluto, determining the rate of universal expansion, discovering all galaxies are anchored by black holes, among other things. In the late 90s, the shuttle program would help accomplish one of the main reasons for its original ideation. Construction of the International Space Station began in 1998, and the shuttle program was critical in delivering parts and servicing the station until the shuttle's retirement in 2011. The year 2000 marked the beginning of humanity's permanent presence in space with the ISS. The program also supplied transportation for numerous other scientific experiments, satellite and probe launches, and servicing missions for objects already in orbit. It would also return our friend John Glenn to space in 1998 at the age of 77. Landing here, now down in March. Main gear touchdown. Pilot Jim Dutton now deploying the drag chute. Nose gear touchdown. During the fleet's 135 missions, tragedy did strike twice. The first disaster occurred in 1986 when Challenger broke apart shortly after launch, killing the entire crew of seven, including teacher Krista McAuliffe. Tragedy would strike again in 2003, this time when Columbia disintegrated upon atmospheric reentry. These two disasters would highlight some of the safety issues with the shuttlecraft and were a contributing reason to the retirement of the shuttle program. 
In 2004, preparations for the end of the space shuttle era began, outlining final construction and servicing missions to take place over the coming years. Atlantis became the final shuttle to fly a mission in 2011, and upon completion, the space shuttle program concluded. In the modern day, NASA has set sights on exploration further than humanity has ever reached. First, recall the Voyager probes launched all the way back in the late 70s? Both Voyager 1 and 2 collected data and images of the furthest plants in our solar system as they flew by. And in 2013, NASA announced that Voyager 1 had become the first human-made spacecraft to leave the solar system and enter interstellar space, 45 years after its initial launch. The Parker Solar Probe, launched in 2018, became the first space probe to touch the sun in pursuit of further knowledge of the star at the center of our solar system. In 2021, after a few delays, the James Webb Space Telescope was launched. It became the most powerful telescope humanity has ever created. Its goals are to search for the earliest stars and galaxies following the Big Bang, learn about the formation of galaxies, stars, and planets, and further our understanding of the origins of life. Finally, NASA has begun its most ambitious program yet, named Artemis. Artemis and the Orion spacecraft are planned to return astronauts to the moon for the first time since Apollo 17, all the way back in 1972. Artemis 1 was just launched November 16th, 2022. It was an unmanned flight primarily testing the Orion craft. Seven, six, five, four stage engine start. Three, two, one, boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis 1, we rise together back to the moon and beyond. Subsequent Artemis missions are planned on being manned, with Artemis 3 planned to touch down on the lunar service with astronauts in 2025 or 2026. The Artemis program also has the stated goals of bringing the first woman and first person of color to the moon. These missions are laying the groundwork for potential later manned missions to Mars similar to Gemini's relationship to the Apollo missions, possibly by as early as 2033. In the words of Buzz Aldrin, Mars is there to be reached.